Couple more points. Um, we, you know, we didn't have a ton of time to go into all the features of these products, but right after this keynote, uh, there's going to be technical sessions. You can dive in deep and see all the functionality and all the products that we uh, announced today. So I encourage you to do that. The other thing I want to point out is, again, we're going to keep up this pace of releasing software to you uh, as rapidly as we possibly can. And in fact, in the case of System Link and FlexLogger, we're going to be moving to a three-month release cadence, uh, mainly so we can be more responsive to your, to, to your feedback. And so be expecting us to be releasing those products even more rapidly than normal. OK. So that was just a really brief glimpse of what we're announcing today. Now let's think, uh, let's look in the future. Let's talk about some software that's not quite ready for release. Please welcome to the stage Duncan Hudson, our Chief Platform Officer. Hey, Duncan. Hi, Amid. OK, now you've got a bit of an unusual title. Can you please explain to the audience, what's the Chief Platform Officer? Yeah, sure. So the, the NI software platform is important enough that we made the decision to elevate oversight of the platform to an executive level position. A chief platform officer is essentially a more software-oriented chief technology officer responsible for driving innovation across the platform and ensuring that all the pieces of the platform play seamlessly together. OK, now, Duncan, this afternoon we heard uh, a lot of success stories from our customers. They're having a lot of success with the tools that they've got. But we made a point of asking them what challenges they foresee as they look to the future. Uh, talk to us about where we see the NI platform going that might address some of the challenges raised. Yeah, sure. A, a common thread we saw was the need for managing systems, whether in a railroad, in a flight test field, or in a laboratory. And that's why, as Josh just shared, we introduced System Link to address some of the newer, bigger data management and system management challenges that our customers are experiencing. System Link will address the challenges of large-scale deployments that were highlighted by Cirrus Logic, and will also provide the data backbone that CRRC was uh, looking for. But once you actually have control over your systems and your data, we actually envision some more interesting things you can do to drive further productivity for teams doing test and measurement. Yeah, at NI, we always strive to take advantage of the latest technologies, whether they're hardware technologies or software technologies. And one of the trends I'm sure everybody's noticed is uh, in technologies today is all about getting more value from data, whether that's cloud computing or advanced analytics or artificial intelligence. And so by building out this part of the NI platform and extending it, we're going to be able to take advantage of those technologies so you can take advantage of those technologies. Now, Duncan, um, let's let's do some vision casting here. Let's let's. Give an example of what this might look like. Sure. So science fiction writers often look to technology trends for their inspiration. Uh, you know uh, Iron Man, the movie? Yeah. Uh, Tony Stark applies engineering to make himself a superhero. Let's take a look at a clip from the movie where Tony is applying artificial intelligence to his engineering. Jarvis, you up? Or you, sir, or wait? I'd like to open a new project file, indexed as Mark II. Let's connect to the Cisco, have it reconfigure the shell metals, use the gold titanium alloy from the Seraphim tactical satellite. That should ensure fuselage integrity while maintaining power to weight ratio. Got it? Yes. The render is complete. So what we saw here was Tony Stark interacting with an artificial intelligence, Jarvis, giving it high-level tasks to do, and then the artificial intelligence was taking care of the low-level implementation, enabling Tony to innovate faster. But what's really important is, what is it that, that makes Jarvis so powerful? And can you imagine what it would take to program a system do, that could do something like that. Yeah, Duncan, I don't think we would be programming a system like Jarvis. If Jarvis were to exist today, it's probably a combination of learning algorithms and large amounts of data. Yeah, so we, we saw uh, Tony applying artificial intelligence to engineering, but admittedly, that's largely the stuff of science fiction today. However, I, I believe that automated test and automated measurement can be made more intelligent by the application of technologies like machine learning. And now that we have the tools to properly manage systems and data, that's exactly what we aim to do. OK, well, let's look at an example of something that might be possible. Let's invite Jeff on stage. Now, Jeff's been working on a research project. He's got a large amount of test data. And the complexity of the DUT and the complexity of the test data is such that normal test limits won't tell him which ones are passing and which ones are failing. Take it away from there, Jeff. What did you do? 
So a test run can produce a lot of data, and sometimes the results are hard to classify. An expert engineer can see the difference between what's normal and what's anomalous, but it's often difficult to automate detection. Let's focus in on a data set of 16,000 waveforms we obtained from one of our customers. What you're seeing on the screen is a prototype of a web UI that allows an engineer to quickly visualize and label their test results. As the data is labeled, a machine learning model is being trained in the background to automatically detect the failures. The model improves each time new data is labeled as indicated by the validation score increasing. The basic idea is that by labeling a small set of your data, a machine learning model can be trained to analyze the rest of your data that a human has never inspected. The result of this process is a trained model, and that trained model can be used to improve automated tests in two common ways. For design validation, you can now quickly validate all of your test results from the entire test run. For production test, we can take that deployed model and run it on the server as new data arrives, or all the way at the edge as we're acquiring the data and determining whether to pass or fail a specific device. Yeah, without these technologies, analyzing your test results can rapidly become a bottleneck, uh, resulting in lower product quality or higher cost of test or longer time to market, as you have to manually inspect all these test results or, or worse yet, not look at them at all. For this particular data set, you can see that after labeling just 2% of the 16,000 waveforms, we're able to train a model with 99% accuracy. This demo is an example of how we're expanding the NI platform to leverage technology trends like machine learning to enable our customers to take advantage of their measurement data. Thanks, Jeff. So Jeff showed us what's possible when you have large data and you apply technologies like machine learning to them. It's similar to what we saw with Jar to what Jarvis gave Tony, which was an AI-assisted engineering process. So that was a great example. Um, now, Duncan, I promised Santiago that we would maybe have some ideas about how we could help him maintain efficiencies as he goes to production. What are some ways that he could benefit from the system? Yeah, so for Joby, what something would look like would maybe be uh, automated test flight results, where you could see not only the results of the tests that the test engineers programmed, but also anomalies that the engineering team never envisioned in the first place. It could also look like things like uh, automatically determining appropriate test limits or automatically detecting production tests that are redundant and don't need to run. These are just a, a few of the ways this technology could be applied to the engineering workflow. Okay, so when you say engineering workflow, is it the NI workflow or any engineering workflow? Well, to my mind, they're really the same thing because the NI platform has always been open to use whatever third-party technology you need in order to solve your system needs. And with this approach, you realize the benefits that were highlighted by Texas A&M, where they were able to use the best-in-class technology from multiple vendors in order to accomplish their system needs. And it's the same open platform and open ecosystem approach that we'll, we'll take in providing analytics and workflow optimization atop uh, data management and system management. You know, uh, it's a pretty exciting time for the uh, NI software platform and its users. Uh, system Link is the first step towards gaining control over your systems and your data, but it, it's really just the beginning. Uh, we, we envision it as the foundation upon which we can deliver more insights from your data and a more optimized engineering workflow so that together we can build the future faster. Yeah, I agree with you, Duncan. This is a really exciting time. I'm really excited to build this product, and I'm really excited to see everything that you'll do when you have this capability. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of NI Week.